Break Studios. It's Dan and Doug. Come on! So, get hyped. Be hyped. This is... The Hype. What is going down, everybody? The Hype is back. We took a week off. We're back. We got so much to talk about. This is episode number 107. Check us out at mojobreak.com. Follow us on Twitter at mojobreak underscore com as well as Instagram. We got a jam-packed show. We're brought to you by Brondo, the Thirst Mutilator. We're going to talk some Bowman Chrome today, some early sales from the brand new 2019 Bowman Chrome release and give you our thoughts. We're also going to talk negotiating on eBay, like the nuances and some ideas on how you can, you know, better yourself as a seller and a buyer. And we're going to end it off with some immaculate basketball. So it's going to be a jam packed show. Denim Dan, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Two weeks since we've done the live show. Yeah, we took one week off. We took one week off. We did a podcast version. But we didn't, I don't know. We didn't, we didn't even do a podcast version. We no, just, no, 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 no. It's been two weeks since we've done the live show. We did a podcast version three weeks ago, two three weeks, weeks ago. We didn't, I, I'm yeah, pretty we were live two weeks ago. We were, we were 106 was in the house. Ooh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, you know, it all blurs. I don't, it, it blurs. I don't know. I don't think, I think it's been longer than a week. It was too many sodas in Vegas. I understand. I mean, it, it's hard for me to remember what I ate for lunch yesterday, but um, we know. did actually, I got to say Sunday while everybody else is going out at the industry, industry summit, everybody else is going out. Um, you know, golfing. We were putting in some serious work. We were. Yeah, we had we, meetings with uh, Anheuser Busch, all kinds of. Uh, stuff no, yeah, we were. On. We were killing it, like just buckets. Yeah, and yeah. some uh, some football. Yeah, exactly. It was good times. <clears throat> Speaking of football, we've got a Tom Brady promo, guys. Check it out, MojoBreak.com. You could win a signed Tom Brady, either jersey, uh, football, or helmet. And the jerseys aren't no fake league, you know, jerseys that have been used in the past. Fake, I don't know. fake what? <laughs> league, fake league jerseys. Fake league, fake league jerseys. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fake league jerseys where uh, they're Nike Elite jerseys. And what we're gonna do is we've got eight breaks that are attached. So we're gonna take all the names from those breaks and somebody's going to win this two thousand dollar plus tom brady so uh there's three that's happening today it's spectra certified and donruss so not only do you get your spots in the break but you get a chance at winning this you know once in a lifetime goat piece of memorabilia so um it's a, a tri-star product that came out there's only 20 cases made and each case has three signed tom brady items so we're going to open up that envelope and send it to the winner on friday and it's going to be awesome so you're gonna get into breaks anyway why not have a chance of winning a piece of history, winning the greatest of all time, Tom Brady. So, uh, like I said, Nike Elite jerseys. They have inscribed helmets that are, uh, they have the We're Still Here inscription, which is super rare. Uh, so, check it out. Uh, Tom Brady is exclusive to TriStar. So, we've got two of these cases. We're going to be doing some breaks, giving away some Tom Brady stuff. So, get in on it. There's two more on Thursday, and then there'll be uh, one on Friday as well that you can get in. And more chances, the more spots you have, the more chances you have to win. I know Dan, on the other side of being, you know, two losses to Tom Brady, would love to have a Tom Brady piece right in his bedroom, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. I would, yeah. you know. You would? Would you? I would. I would love you? him. He is, he's the GOAT, He's a right? Bay Area guy. He's the you know? GOAT. He's he is. way better than Joe Montana. I wouldn't say way better, but he is way, better. Way better. He is better. I mean, numbers don't lie. Six Super Bowls. I mean, he's unfortunately, okay. you know. He's okay. He's, 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 he's okay. I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to hate. He's okay. I need to find out what he's doing, man. I need to, you know, get on that diet and that stretching. You know, I need to, you know, be like Tom, man. That's my, that's my, next, uh, that's my next goal. But anyways, we're going to get right into Bowman Chrome Talk. You guys, we did, I don't know, what, 35, 40 cases of Bowman. Uh, So we've seen a lot of it, and uh, some early data has been trickling in. And I wanted to go over some of the names and uh, some of the big names right out of the gate. So everybody's chasing Noel V is probably the the, the biggest name right away. And uh, an early Noel V, Marte, who is a prospect who's 17 years old, who plays for the Mariners, his base autos are going for about 180, 178. So uh, that's not a a huge surprise for me. That's about where I thought it would be. Um, The other guys, like Devi Garcia, came out. His prices, he's a pitcher for the Yankees that supposedly has just ridiculous stuff. $66 on Devi Garcia. A couple of the other names that are on there. We've got uh, Alexander Canario for our Giants. uh, $78 on a Bowman Chrome base. And I'm just looking at base. I mean, obviously, colors are going to go for a lot more. Uh, you get down into the reds, the the golds, and stuff like that. These cards are going to, uh, you know, be a lot. Seth Beer was a little surprising. So Seth Beer's early data: forty one bucks for a base auto, 
And uh, Frutus Nova, which I don't know if I'm saying correctly, I got to hear his name in a game, $91. So do you think Seth Beer, think that that was a Diamondbacks card? You think it would be a little bit more? Do you think the fact that that card is on the Astros and he was traded in the Zach Grinky deal and he's on the Diamondbacks now, you think that's affecting what that card would go for? Um, that might have a little bit to do with it. I, I think, and it, I think the tops just flat out messed up on this one. So there's no first Bowman logo on Seth Beer's cards. Confusing to us Bowman collectors. I just assumed when I pulled it, oh man, Seth Beer's already had a first Bowman. Well, guess what? He doesn't. He has base cards and he had a Mojo refractor out of the mega boxes. Those didn't have first Bowman on it either. So he does not have a first Bowman technically. So this is his first Bowman auto. This is the card to collect. So I think collectors aren't sure where to go with this. I think that Seth Beer is a strong buy at $41, a base auto. Uh, 28th overall, kid's got power, um, plays in a hitter-friendly park now. But like what to Dan's point, yeah, he, he doesn't play for the team that his card is on. So that could affect it, could not. I mean, doesn't seem to affect Glaber Torres too much. Yeah, but it does affect it, – it affected Dansby Swanson a little bit. But he hasn't really performed at the major league level. Right. He's, had, it, he's had some injuries. So I think it all breaks down to if this guy is going to perform. It's not going to matter what jersey he's in. Um, but as you can see in the next uh, slide, and for you guys that are listening to the podcast, uh, normally there's a first Bowman logo on a first Bowman auto card. So that signifies that, hey, this is his very best card. So for you guys that don't collect baseball or you're just getting into collecting, the first Bowman is king. That is the card that you want. There will never be another autograph put out that will be worth more than the first Bowman card. So, But for Seth Beer, for whatever, I don't know. There was, you know, Too many photoshopping jobs for that one day at Tops. I think what happened, I know what happened. If you look at that photo, you wouldn't be able to put the first Bowman without oh, covering his face. Come on, really? Hey, man. Should have covered his face. If they, if they put it on there, what if they did have it on there in the mock? Before going to print, and they were like, "We can't use it." Well, my, like, where else do they put it? They can't put it in another spot of the card because it wouldn't be standardized with the rest of the set, right? So, maybe that was literally the only photo they had. What is he like, Sasquatch? There's only one photo in existence. But you know how it is. I mean, they budget for one. They have one photo. They go to print, and they realize they can't use the first Bowman font there because they're going to cover his face. I think because we it, imagine imagine if there was a first Bowman and it was actually covering covering his face, people would be like, "What's stupid?" Well, I think that there would be some kind of quality control. They could probably but, move move the photo over a but, little bit. I mean, I know it's a long shot, but you think that might actually be it? It could. It, there's a chance. I don't think there's so. a chance. Mm, I don't think so. I know they play they pay Getty images and maybe that's it maybe they, they committed to f you know five hundred dollar photo of Seth Beer I don't know how much Getty images charges for for use of commercial photos but I mean maybe I mean I don't know but I I think what happened this is my theory we took a trip down to Tops in what twenty thirteen there's a bunch of guys working in cubicles it's very silent in the place. And they're basically hammering away on Photoshop. They're hammering away, putting in new photos, changing names. And there's probably a guy that had to do, what, 400 cards? So he's working on the vet checklist, and then maybe he gets into the prospect checklist, and, and, he, and, and he doesn't put the first And the one the guy, field. the one guy he misses? Seth Beer. Is Seth Beer. Could the be. guy who probably had, probably, in the, I mean, he was in the top three of hype in this product. So if you're going to miss it on somebody, you probably wouldn't want to miss it on him. Man, I knew he was a pro. I thought it was weird, you know. Like I thought, I knew he was a prospect, but I, I, for some reason, I was like, okay, so he doesn't have the first Bowman. That's just I thought that was just like, you know, like there's some guys in there that don't have like the first Bowman, but they're like vets, right? Vet autos, or they've already had a first Bowman and it's their second yeah. Bowman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I thought he was just one of those guys. I didn't know it was literally his first Bowman. It, it well there well it is but it doesn't say first Bowman and he does have two other base cards that came out prior which I guess you could technically say is first Bowman not first Bowman auto and those those don't have first Bowmans on either so I don't know what it is may, well, to may, signify may, to signify first Bowman it doesn't have to have an auto on it you could have a first Bowman base card but I've seen first Bowmans on base cards and I've seen first Bowman on <clears> autos <throat> as well uh, because same, uh, we wouldn't player. be having this conversation if it said first Bowman on his previous base cards right right but no i think i've seen it where we've had it vladimir guerrero we had that 2017 or whatever it was we had base cards purple not signed and then he had his 2016 chrome which was first bowman as well 
So I think they do it for both. But yeah, that's not technically a first. But first Bowman is autoed or non-autoed. It doesn't matter. Whatever right, comes no, I'm saying out first. he had two of each. He had one non-auto and one regular. Well, that's they Vlad. were both that's, first Bowman. That's Vlad. You got to. I mean, you're but, not. I mean, this, you, have, you have Vlad. You're not going to put. Uh, you're going to put first Bowman on all of them. I'm not trying to sound like a WB here, but they are basically, you know, Warner Brothers, they, right? Warner Brothers. <laughs> um, they are. They, they kind of confuse collectors here. There was a that was kind of a big mistake, and I think the the prices are suffering for that reason. Um, he's the only first round guy in Bowman Chrome. The only first rounder. There's a lot of international prospects in this year's Bowman Chrome, like there always is. But he's the only first rounder. No first Bowman on there. Like I said, I just think it was a dude photoshopping, and he, you know, he, you know, the coffee ran out. He's a little tired. He wasn't drinking a rock star, and he just didn't put it in there. Wasn't drinking Brondo. He, wasn't yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't using. May have been dehydrated. He might have been. He might have been. I mean, you plus you got a guy that's got the last name Beer. I mean, that is baseball. Beer and that baseball. is baseball. It is. I mean, this guy blows up. Can you imagine the what about Seth that, Hot Dog? <laughs> Seth, hot, dog. <laughs> hot dogs are pretty baseball. Seth garlic fries. <laughs> but I mean, you could market this guy. I mean, at some point he might get traded to the Brewers, I think, right? I mean, that would be the, the perfect fit. Uh, but Seth Beer, man. I mean, you know, it's 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 as American as apple pie, right? Seth apple pie. Let's do that. So Yeah, that's that's strange. Is that is that is this the same situation as Chris Bryant or no? It is, but that's an odd year. So that's another thing I want to get to the they bottom. Didn't, in two thousand thirteen they didn't put first Bowman uh, on uh, any, any of the prospects. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So Way back in the day, two thousand thirteen. So was that vintage I, vintage cards? Vintage what, cards. Did, did they just say this didn't feel like it? They were trying something new. Or? There was no explanation. Got to be um, weird and wacky sometimes. I thought maybe it was the design department that was like, man, we don't like that on there. But or I was thinking maybe they came out with Bowman and they just didn't print it. So they're like, we can't but do I, it for Bowman Chrome. But I gotta say, I gotta say, 2013 Bowman, it's a heck of a design. It is. So maybe they don't want to, you know, mess with something that was amazing. So, yeah, there's a bunch of mysteries when it comes to the inner workings of Bowman collectors. And 2013 is the biggest. So if you're you know near your computer, you're on your phone, I would search. Judge is one of the bigger ones. And Chris Bryant has a 2013 as well, which is even more confusing, which we don't have time for today. But uh, <laughs> none of those 2013 Bowmans have the first Bowman logo on it. So I don't know. You know, yeah, the his... first Bowman logo is the equivalent of a rookie card logo. Yeah. Real quick. Um, the 2013 Chris Bryant Bowman cards. Bowman draft cards you can only get in 2014 products. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or are you confused yet? So they had him sign for some reason the 2013 design, Chris Bryant. Everybody assumed it was going to be in 2013 draft that year. It wasn't. He came out and he was a redemption in 2014, which was the 2014 design. So people were trying to, you know, get those. And then later on in the year, they announced that the 2013 versions were going to be inserted randomly throughout multiple Bowman and Topps products. Actually, Bowman products. It was Inception and Platinum that year. So it was weird. It was just a weird scenario, and it's divided the Chris Bryant super collector group. There's people that like the 14, and there's people that like the 13. It was actually it was through the whole Bowman catalog, right? It was Bowman, Bowman Chrome, um, yeah, all Bowman Inception, Bowman Platinum. Yep. And I remember because we opened up a lot of Bowman Platinum. We opened up a lot of uh, Bowman Inception, and it seemed like color parallels refractors you would only get out of like bowman chrome yeah i remember there being a lot of colored chris bryant's and, and bowman I, chrome and i want to say the super factor came out of chrome yeah and i want to say bowman platinum had a lot of the base designs base and refractors and refractors yeah, regular refractors so it was uh it was interesting because you would in bowman platinum we probably did 50 cases 75 cases maybe something like that we would pull almost one chris bryant per case yeah, it was like one per case or maybe one every other case, but they would come out on a pretty regular basis. And unfortunately, they were worth a lot more than they are now. So crazy how this whole prospect game works, which is a whole other topic that we'll get a little bit into here. Uh, Busta asks, what is Dan drinking? A urine sample. It's actually Brondo. He's drinking Brondo, the thirst mutilator. So it's what plants crave. It's not Brondo, but it's very similar. It's keeping me uh, hydrated. They <laughs> good stuff. Electrolyte. He's drinking Pedialyte. It's getting ready for the day. Um, but if you want to collect Bowman right after this show, it's about halfway full. I'm sure it'll be filled up by the time we end the show. We've got a Chrome HTA case, random team style, coming up right after the show. So get in, chase Seth Beer, Noel V. Marte. You could possibly hit a Vlad or a Tatis in there as well. Um, but it seems like the choice per capita 
is producing a lot more color. So the choice boxes are going up. So I think our price has already gotten raised for Friday's choice. So this is going to be the lowest, the lower price uh, for choice today. So get another the half left. And then we also have a Chrome Hobby case again as well today. So case 17 is going to break after choice. So get your Bowman on. We're going to be breaking it. We've got uh, a little bit more cases. So we'll be doing it throughout so the week. It's the a little surprising because I personally find more value in the hobby cases than I do the HTA. I know I know you're getting more color in the HTA, you're getting an extra auto, but you don't get the color in the base. I see more value in the base. Yeah. Yeah. But well I, I mean it it's weird. It happens like that every year. It seems like everybody gravitates towards the HTA with the three autos, but what did you like, uh, C Rad? You bought, 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 busted a bunch over the weekend. What was your what were you seeing more big hits coming out of? Um I mean, pretty much what Dan said. Like, I, I did see bigger. I probably saw more consistently bigger names coming out of choice, but uh, the value is definitely in the in the hobby because of the base. Like, that's the same thing I was asking. I was like, I was like, I was telling people all weekend. I was like, Dan, I know y'all love, like, I know y'all love to break HTA choice and you get the autos, but hobby, you be get, like sometimes you get like insane cases where you get so much color. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're only getting one more auto a box right right it's only one auto minus the man minus the base and you're not getting the base so yeah, right. i i i look at it and i'm like it surprises me every year how hta just goes through the roof well i have two opinions on it me personally opening a box if i was going to sit and open a box i like the hobby because I, I don't i mean there's really no nothing left to be desired when you open up the choice if you're not familiar with the choice it's a one pack and it's three cards in a snap case so literally it's like you know there's no there's no foreplay going on you know what i'm saying you get to the the, the hobby and you you know there's packs and there's packs you don't know when your auto is going to come so there's just like i got an orange is it an auto no it's not an auto but maybe my next pack you know so there's a lot more left to be desired if you guys understand what i'm saying so um yeah, but the choice is great for breaks though it's it's quick it's fast uh, a lot no, of action no 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 it isn't we actually it takes us longer to go through an HTA, then it does dual camming a Bowman Chrome Hobby case. Oh, I don't we, know about we're, that one. No, then. we're no, we're at. Oh, you guys. No, we are at. <laughs> we're at eighteen minutes. Yeah, see, that's like I don't know. We're at eighteen minutes. We for are at a, eighteen uh, minutes. For eighteen a minutes for a hobby case. Pretty impressive. <laughs> I think it's a world record. We should get Guinness out here for that for a Chrome. Yeah, that's fast. It's it a, a little bit longer. a lot of money that. to come down here. That's true. That's true. Well, one thing before we move on to this subject, I did want to note that I felt like some of the early prices on this. And I want to refer back to Soto and Torres because they're, they came out of Chrome. But you go back to the Noel V. Marte and, and the guys we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a prime time to invest right now. If you're going to invest, and I shouldn't be telling you guys because I'm going to go on there and I'm going to buy some of these <coughs> right now. I feel like it's 178 is too low for Marte. Um, Debbie Garcia is a pitcher. I, I, I personally 50, 50. yeah, I personally stay away from pitchers, but he does play for the Yankees. Um, but the other guys, I mean, Canario, all these guys, are pretty low prices when you consider – how much the possibility of it going up. So I think there's a couple different reasons. I think there's a lot of fatigue on the market right now because of everybody's opening this stuff. And I feel like there's baseball season's pretty much over. So you're, you're, you're not going to get a whole lot of baseball besides the postseason. You're not going to see what these guys are going to do in the minor leagues really until next year. So I, I think it's a, this, this and early draft is the time to invest in Bowman cards. So, I mean, I was surprised at some of these early prices. Now they may go up, you know, as you know, supply and demand and there's less of these on the market but uh, i'm sure there's a lot of flippers uh collector flippers that are gonna basically be uh buying right now because the prices seem great see i i actually on that same idea i the the top guys are the obvious ones but i like the ultra low risk right um two dollar so, three dollar so $4, find $4. find the guys who are relatively young i've actually found a guy today uh, Levon Soto, Angels prospect. Based on name alone, right? Levon Soto, based on name alone, but he's six foot. Uh, he plays second short center. Um, I don't have any chat, so if we're like, are we S talking me over here? We got <laughs> no, long arms Mike said thanks. They'll go up because of this podcast. No, 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 no. So uh, <laughs> on, on a big market team, we've seen prospects from the Angels do well on the, on the card market. Uh, you know, Otani didn't have a problem selling, even though he wasn't technically a prospect. Uh, but you can get his auto, his base auto, for under five bucks. Yeah. And he's a position player. He is young. He's in A ball. So guys like that, not him specifically, but 
hitters who are young, throw some darts, see what happens. Buy a couple $5 autos. In two years, it may be, I mean, you may, it may be $100, $200, $300 card. Who knows? Well, uh, Busta says he's the next Josh Ockamy. Um, also, Dan just uh, jinxed Soto's career, says Max. Oh. He might have. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been known to do that. Look what happened with Jameis Winston. I mean. Okay. Jameis Winston had a, good, he had a good game. He had a good game. He was throwing, just throwing touchdowns to Mike Evans. Not Danny Dimes, though. He didn't have a Danny Dimes type of day. He didn't. That's a whole other, if, whole if, other topic. If Football. Tampa Bay had a kicker, they win that game. True. But with the theory that Mike's saying in the chat is that we're raising the price of Bowman cards, then I say well, you guys should go out and buy Ryan Leaf. I mean, it, he's got a bright future ahead of him for the Chargers. No, I'm kidding. Um, but anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and move on. And, Are we going to talk uh, about Gardner Minshew? No, we're not. I don't, oh. have, I don't have any Gardner data. Oh. I did want to mention this is the eBay listing of the day because of the subheading. It was amazing when I saw it. And, you know, you guys should go out and try to buy this card as soon as you can. It's on the next slide. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's a prism gold vinyl to five. And the subtitle, but you can pay for subtitles on eBay. Lights now. out. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy's selling it for 300000 or best offer. Deal. It's a gem 10 gold vinyl. Patrick Mahomes, number to five. Pop two. There's another one out there for three hundred thousand or best offer. And in the subtitle, he put "Lights Out, Good Night, Super Fractor Masterpiece Rarity." I'll agree with them on the rarity. Now, when I think of lights out and I think of a three hundred thousand dollar card, I think I'm going to live in a tent. I won't have any lights because I cannot afford anything past the fact that I have a three hundred thousand dollar Patrick Mahomes. Now it's pop two, though. It is pop two. Lights out, bruh. Lights out. Good night. <laughs> He is lights out. I'm trying to understand the thought process. Why? Well, that's how I search for cards. <laughs> I mean, you, wait, wait, you don't put that? I, I, well, I did today. I usually I go Sean Mannion, lights out, good night, <laughs> NT, RPA. <laughs> Comes up every time. <laughs> well, lights out, good night, though. Like, lights out. There's a, there's a couple different ways you can go with that. You can go lights out. You're sleeping on the porch now. Dude, you're... that guy's got an apple. Of course he does. I knew, I knew of course he has I, an I... apple sitting in his tent. Because he just bought the $300,000 Mahomes and he can't pay no, the light bill. No, he bought the Apple computer. He's screwed. He's screwed. He's screwed. He's I was going to look for a different photo. I knew you were going to bring up the Dude, I, I mean, was gonna, I'm about to photo that shop that shit out. No, he, that's. That sums it up right there. No. Sums up Apple users. Well, he had to get it, get an Apple and live in a tent. Well, I got three cameras now, so. Uh, so you got three cameras, and they're there's four no, actually. I got four. There's no point. On one phone. There's no point. The more the barrier. No, it isn't. What? When are you gonna use it? I could take three. And why? Why would you go out and get the brand new iPhone? Three chicks at the same time, man. <laughs> three chicks at the same time. <laughs> you could take three separate pictures. I don't know. I haven't got it yet, so I'm waiting for so it. So you, you actually don't even know if it's even usable. It could not be. I don't know. It, could, it looks it, pretty cool. It could look like three cameras, but actually just be one camera. You wouldn't even know the difference. I would. It's, that slow-mo thing is worth the price alone. I dude, know. come on. Yeah. Come on, dude. We're going to start it, but doing it, but it. But it's not, though. We're you're just, never You're never going to use it. Yeah, we're going to start doing slow fees for our hits. If you don't know what a slow fee is, by the way, it's a oh, selfie dude, that makes in me slow puke. motion. That makes me want to puke. Because the front-facing camera can do slow-mo now, guys. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, the next, the, maybe C-Rad 6.5, follow him on Instagram. He's going to be doing some slow fees on Instagram. Stop, dude, slow fee. It's, it's slow so, fee. so it's, stupid. It's trending, dude. I, mean, I, I don't even times. have the chat up. Everybody in the chat better agree that that's dumb. Get, in the, get with the times, Denim Dan. Get with the times. <laughs> <laughs> Lights out, good night. Hashtag. Hashtag. But yeah, back to this. I mean, I could not believe that 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 subheading. So that gets that gets eBay. There's the guy. The there's show. the guy with his uh his Apple note notebook, or is that what it's, what's what's it called? Notepad. MacBook. MacBook. I don't know if that's a MacBook Pro or not. I can't tell, but uh, you know. And you know what? Very typical. He has a four thousand dollar computer, and he put a sticker on it. <laughs> uh, they're not quite that expensive. So whatever. They're, they are though. Well, it depends they on are. if you get all the bells and whistles in it. And he, uh, are you going to mention that the fact that he's wearing sandals, too, that all <laughs> Apple users wear sandals? He definitely fits a description. If he had socks. That is everybody who's at the Apple store. That's no, everybody who's that. in there. No. Windbreaker and flip-flops. It, now, if he had socks and flip-flops, would that be better? It, it, they're in there. They're in there. They're, they're in there. <laughs> well, he bought the Patrick Mahomes, so he don't have no more socks. 
He's had to get That's what happens, of, had to, man. Had to get rid of everything. He's, he, o- well, he's open. It, the Mahomes and the computer put him in a tent. You're right. Right. All right. So since we were on the topic of eBay, I wanted to get into this discussion and, and, and disclaimer. I'm, I'm no pro at this myself, but I thought we'd have a healthy discussion about negotiating on eBay. You find a card you want for your PC and you see it on eBay and a guy's got it at a, you know, buy it now or best offer. And you go through the negotiation process. I know we've all been through this. And there's, there's some people on, on eBay that are absolutely nuts with their pricing. And I wanted to do a few things just to let you guys know. First off, the next slide, Kyler Murray. So just to let you guys know that if you pull a card in a break or you, pull, you maybe you got it in a box, that um, your card is not worth how much someone else is selling it for, first off. So don't think because there was a one of one Kyler Murray that somebody has up for twelve thousand, and then you pull another one of one Kyler Murray that your card is now worth twelve thousand. This is some guy in a tent that just put the price up for twelve thousand. He's just hoping to get you know whatever he can for it. So you know I think people have that common misconception when they get into this happens hobby. a lot. Yeah, happens they, they, a lot. Oh, the other ones up there for twelve thousand. So I want twelve thousand. No, it's not worth twelve thousand. So what you got to do, and you can kind of see that there's a Jordan logo, Immaculate, not the same set, but by bid sold for $1,800. So that's probably a little bit more realistic for your Kyler Murray 101 if you have one. It's not worth $12,000. It's probably more in the terms of $1,800 to $2,000. But the beauty of this hobby is, is if Kyler has another good game, it will go up. So it's eBay has real-time data. So if you're trying to negotiate, you're trying to get it a card that you want, Just look at completed listings. If it's a rare card, look at a similar player. Use the last two to four completed listings to get an average on your price before you either list it or you negotiate. That's all I'm saying. And I know we deal with stuff, you know, like guys are like, but, you know, my card's worth more because I touched it. Like me personally. Yeah, my card. My card. It's my card, so it's worth more. I I get it. I, I I think like that. It's mine. It's like. It has sentimental value to me. I drink Pedialyte, so my cards are worth more. Okay, I dude. mean, it's, I, not, it's not Pedialyte. It, it, I'm not drinking Pedialyte. It's, oh, that's right. It's Brondo. Sorry. We're sponsored by Brondo, so it's Brondo. It's Brondo's new it's thing. It's not Pedialyte. It, it probably t- – I've, I've never had Pedialyte. Um, I'm assuming it probably – it's probably, probably the, the same s- thing. Probably the same thing. It actually – the bottle looks the same. If I it it does. Case. It, it – I I'm, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the same bottle. It could be It could be Pedialyte just with a different marketing – same factor. behind it, but same same thing coming out of the same uh, same same, same jug. Yeah, same jug, <laughs> same, same jug of stuff. Um, or like you know, I don't know. Charlie Sheen used it to do coke off of, so it's got to be worth at least ten thousand dollars more. My card here. So there's a lot of those excuses you see on eBay. Uh, this is pack fresh, so it's got to be worth more than you know the other guy's card. As a opposed to what? Not pack fresh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Found in a garbage, I guess. I don't know. I, I I do love the pack fresh as a subtitle or in the description. Yeah, how does that even work? Like what? Or I mean, I do. I understand when people put like straight from the pack into a top loader. I mean, I can tell you right now, the Acuna that we had, the blue one, wasn't the case. I didn't put in the description pulled straight from the pack, thrown in about fourteen boxes, and then dug out an, a year and a half later. And then graded a 9.5. Uh, should I put that in the, <laughs> yeah. in the description? The whole, the whole story. The whole story. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking. St- it was on the bottom of my shoe for a couple days. Uh, then it went into a, a old screw down. But, I mean, at that point, it doesn't really matter, though, because it got a 9.5. Right. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Well, I think it's the guys that are uh, but not I bet, But I bet if I put that in the listing... It would have gotten less, even though it was great at a nine five. They're like, it wasn't this wasn't packed fresh at all? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but what about like the immaculates and the you know the cards that are always manhandled out of the pack? So pack fresh, does that even apply to that? You mean it's before not... they? You mean before they get into the pack? Right. When they're being hard signed, hand signed by these players, exactly. And they're, and they're doing what they do to sign them, but they're not going to take. They're not going to be like. They're not signing them with gloves on or no, anything. No. They're, I'm not going to say they're throwing them around, but they, they do what they do. they do. They do what they do. But here's another thing. If you pull it out of a – if you're, if you're listing an Immaculate or an NT and you put Pack Fresh, it doesn't come out of a pack. It comes out of a box. Box. Box Fresh. Box Fresh. Box Fresh. <laughs> um, and then uh, Long Arms Mike said that you should do that. The, the story you had, you know, yeah, it was mangled, then you should put Lights Out. Lights Out. Yeah, right. <laughs> lights yeah. Out. Good night. <laughs> like Nailed it. <laughs> 
But no, I mean, it's what are some of the nuances that you guys deal with on eBay with with negotiating? I mean, we all we, we've used the name a couple times. There is a seller named Black Rose that has cards 20 times, 30 times what comps would sell. Now, what I mean by comps is comparable listings, comparable sales. Um, that person will never go low, will never go to market. I guess they just prey on PC collectors overpaying for cards, and that's their business model. Those people you just you never deal with. You see that they have your card, you cry a little bit, but you don't even make an offer. Um, there was a Joe Staley card. I oh, I, I was going to say this story because I, I, I saw it come across because he uh, – he did a counter offer on a Joe Staley, and he had it listed at like three hundred dollars. It was like a number to ten Pro Bowl relic. Uh, it's it's about a probably a forty to fifty dollar card. I think Doug actually offered him eighty five dollars, which was too much, and he came back with the counter offer of two ninety five. Yeah, five Ooh. five dollars five dollars off. He acted like the eighty five was so disrespectful, huh? <laughs> like you offered him ten. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, <laughs> I, I, honestly, my offer was overpaying. But I'm going to say PC that, item. that's the only offer that he has probably received on that card. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he's he got some Mannion. He's got. He's, yeah, he's got $500 Mannions. It should say uh, for Mojo Break in his subtitle, Lights Out. Lights know. Out. For, lights Out, Mojo Break. This is the, the rest of your Sean Mannion cards I have with my cigar box in the background. That that guy must be balling or, or girl. Uh, must be balling because uh, just. They don't need the money for the cards, I guess. So, but um, funny. And they usually have some pretty high end stuff. They do. They seem to only have like national, a lot of football, national treasures, flawless, kind of stick to the rarities. I think what I've heard is they buy by auction, low numbered stuff, put it on their store for years at a high price. Somebody hoping that some somebody will pay ten times the amount that it's worth, just because they need it. But a funny story. So uh, personally, I pulled a Pete Alonzo Atomic Black Refractor out of Sterling, and this was actually this is li- this is live now. That's the price I lowered it to. I had it at eleven ninety nine. So Black Atomic number to ten Pete Alonzo Refractor out of Sterling. So I got this message from this guy on eBay, and uh, I, I have it in the next screen. And uh, I listed it. It was already up there for a week. It had not sold, not even an offer for a week. The guy says I own same redemption, and it's worth five times that minimum. 5x that. 5x that to be to be clear. <laughs> one word one word. Just letting you know. Thank you. I don't know why you thanked me for that for one. I don't know why it was thank you in there. This is the 1 of 5 and the black is so much nicer. So he linked me up to a $14,000 1 of 5. <laughs> and the black is so much nicer. Just hoping we can all stick to a higher price and accomplish a great deal for ourselves. The card's still on eBay at 899. <laughs> if he thought it was such a good deal, I don't know why he didn't. And buy I'm going to be it. honest. We have not you not received an offer. No, not, not one sniff. Not one offer. Not not a eighty dollar offer. Not a ninety dollar offer. Not a hundred dollar offer. No offers. So in a roundabout way, this guy felt like I was lowballing his card. Mm-hmm. He felt like that his card, and that goes back to what we said in the, the beginning of the segment is he saw a card at fourteen thousand. So in his mind, he's like, card's worth fourteen thousand. New car. Yeah, I'm yeah. like I'm buying a new car, new Apple Watch, all that stuff. Right? Well, you probably need fourteen thousand to get that, so you're right. You probably need fourteen thousand dollars for a new Apple Watch. So a couple days ago, a red number to five with bids four hundred and twenty two dollars. So I feel like going but back, the black, but the black is nicer. You have to send him a link to this dude, <laughs> dude. But, I know. The, but the black is nicer. The black is oh, some, somehow it's nicer, <laughs> even though there's ten, there's five more made of the black. <laughs> But uh, they are live, by the way. I'm thinking I want to redeem it. But um, yeah, so this guy, you know, had, took the time to send me this message saying that my card was too low. I mean, when do you see that? Uh, I've never seen that. And then he didn't even buy it. It was too low, but he didn't even buy it. So you know how you know when a card is too low when you have a buy it now or a best offer when you put it up there and somebody hits buy it now right away. Then you know you screwed. Then up. you're like. I sold it too cheap. Yep. Yep. Like, yep. where's that email now? Right. <laughs> exactly. I'll hit him up. I'll sell it for three fifty. Anybody want it? No. Um, but yeah. So just, I mean, negotiating on eBay. Always use completed listings. Um, eBay is available not only on your phone. Please use completed completed, completed listings. Completed listings. Do not look at the what somebody's asking for it because they will not get that. Now, I don't know if watch count's been shut down though because I I can't seem to find um, completed listing prices on best offers now which kind of sucks. Um, but you can use Terra Peak. I think if you're a seller that uh, has sold enough, you get Terra Peak for free, which gives you that year's worth of data. So that's very useful. Once again, it's T-E-R-A, 
T E R A P E A K Terapeak, <laughs> and it's tied in with eBay now. So they sold to eBay. It gives you a year's worth of data of completed listings. So you can kind of see how the markets turn. You could also use it to decide when to buy and sell as well. It's good data if you if you like like looking at you know numbers of what cards sold for. It's an excellent tool. So, um, but yeah, the only reason why I laugh about that is because we sat through a eBay you know production ed seminar thing, and they brought they were they were talking about Terapeak, and it was from eBay, and they had Terapeak. Spelled wrong. Spelled wrong on yeah. every single one of their slides. Well, <laughs> and we'll move on to the next segment, which is great. Um, so we were at the Industry Summit, and we're going to actually uh, report what happened. Oh. All right, that was it. Yeah, it's it was all went down. It's good. It was good. The Westgate. The West, there it is. It used to be the old Hilton. Um, was it? And, yeah, I mean, it was it was cool to to see some uh, some peeps we see a couple times a year. And uh, it was fun to watch some football. Me and Doug put in some work. And uh, as far as industry topics, yeah, um, that's it. That was it. It was a good show. <clears throat> it was solid, solid. Yeah, it was um, a lot. And it's going to be in Vegas next year. There was rumors going around that it was going to be back in Hawaii, but. It's gonna be back in Vegas. It's gonna be back at the Westgate. What all they talked about was NASCAR, or and well, so we there was one day that we weren't even there. So it's it's like actually not even fair to say crickets. Hey, no, I went to everything. Um, everything, dude. Well, yeah, part of our thing was to ride around in a car. Yeah, so Benini invited us. We actually got to ride in a car with Mr. Greg Galding, who's a 21 year old NASCAR driver who's up and coming in the Xfinity series. And uh, they put a helmet on us, strapped us in this car, and this dude went 200 miles an hour an inch away from the wall at the Las Vegas Speedway. Uh, it was pretty awesome. So thank you to Panini for uh, that Buck. exhilarating event. Buck 60. Buck 60? Buck 60. Oh, I'd like to say 200. It, was, it, it, was, sounds, it, was, it sounds better. Yeah, I, I know it does. I know it, I know it, it sounds great conversation. But it was a buck 60. Actually, I think it was a buck 50. No. Yeah. I almost crapped my pants over 150 miles an hour. Yeah, I mean, we we were like super close to the wall, though. I'll I'll tell you that. I'll, I'll give you that. Like we were like a couple inches away, but uh, yeah, not 200. I mean, I don't even know how fast a NASCAR goes. I think I think when they're racing, they're going like 200 miles an hour. So they're not going to throw. I, I actually don't even think that car that he was in because it's a passenger seat, and I'm pretty sure the regular NASCARs don't have passenger seats. So maybe they don't go as fast. So I don't think they go as fast. They, they might have a and they might have a governor. Maybe, but they also had people out there who were driving those cars, mm-hmm. and they're not going to give somebody a car that goes 200 miles an hour and be like, "Hey, you, you got it right." And uh, back to the uh, topic about finding out what card values are. Corey in the chat says Card Snoop per, uh, works pretty well uh, for completed or best offers as well. So have to look into Card Snoop. Is it uh, is it by Snoop Dogg or? No, he's probably not in the card game, but card snoop, check it out. I'm gonna check it out. So watch card doesn't really work anymore. It doesn't. Yeah, I don't know why. So that's kind of sucks. But uh, we've got 15 spots left in Bowman Chrome HTA. That is gonna be popping off after the show. Uh, but yeah, back to the industry summit. You know, I the reason I kind of was silent there was because I, as a hobby enthusiast, missed the old days when all the manufacturers got together under one place, one roof. And we discussed business, and we had we had a lot of good ideas. Uh, now, Tops is separate, Upper Deck is separate, and then Panini and Leaf and Beckett are separate. So there's three different events, a lot of traveling. Vegas is cool, so that was awesome. But I think everybody needs to be under the same roof again, and all the egos need to be thrown out the door, and we need to go back to the Orleans or someplace like that and conduct business. Actually, I thought the Westgate was a it great— It was awesome. It, it was a good place to have it. It was. Uh, good spot. I would actually pick it— pick it over the orleans i'd pick it over flamingo they've had it at the Flam- flamingo one year and they had it at the tuscany i think the westgate even though it's a little bit off the strip was the best venue it is the world largest sports book and they have not only a sports book but then they have what we're showing here on the uh, screen they have a theater i think that had all the games on too so i think really it should be either back at the westgate or we can take it down to fremont street to the el cortez the El Cortez. El Cortez would be yeah. a good good spot to have the industry summit. We're thinking about having the breaker convention out there. At the El Cortez. El Cortez. It's dude. a good spot. 
Justin says, I posted a rookie auto as a buy it now for $9, and someone messaged me if the auto and the card was legitimate. I was so confused. I did some research, and the card had been selling for 40 to $50. <laughs> hey, I've been there before, too. You just you're, you look at the wrong card, and you put it up low, and then it gets like just what Dan said. Buy it now. It's gone. And you're like, ah, oh, left some money on the table. So, but Anyways, I wanted to talk about uh, immaculate collegiate basketball and how confusing – Next week will be for basketball collectors because you got 1920 Immaculate Collegiate coming out early in the week. Well, they're dropping it on Friday. Get your get your dog, your mom, your grandma, your auntie. Get them all on the computer to kind of try to get one of these boxes. And then they have 1819 Immaculate coming out the same week. So are we going to have people in the chat, C-Rad, that are going to come up to us and think they're going to get the Pelicans on Friday? They think they're going to have Zion? Because I, I was just thinking about it. You can't really release two of the same product lines from different years during the same week. Yeah, that's... Watch them. Well, I'm watching them. <laughs> right? They're, they're going to do it. They're going to do strange. it. It's going to go down. Now, I get the confusing thing because there's going to be a huge price difference between the Pelicans and the two products. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have one case that is $29 and then one case that's like $1,000 or $800 or who knows. Who knows? Uh, who, I, don't, I have no idea. We're not even going to get a case of it. I can tell you that right now. It's one box... What did they say? There was 2,000 boxes made? Is that two, what people were 2, saying? 2,000 boxes, maybe. One box per order. Um, it's going to sell out quick. Uh, you know, as consumers, should be pretty excited about this release. It gives you an opportunity to buy a high-end Zion product. Early high-end Zion. Let's just Zion. call it early. Zion product. Well, now you're confusing people. They think they're going to have Zion in their box. They uh, could. Yeah, well, it could, yeah. There's a chance. A chance at high-end Zion. Out of the gate. Just to be clear, this is not released through any distributor channel or any uh, retail channels. This is only available through Panini's website. So we're going to be trying to get it. It's just pretty much like a you first off the line it. release. Pretty much, but the uh, the whole off the a whole off the line release, I guess. Right, yeah. the whole line is going to be released on Panini. Off the line. Off the line. Off the line. Off the line. Just the line off release. the line. Panini Immaculate Collegiate. 1920 off the line and there's a lot of people that are pissed off that they feel like you know the wbs of the world are out here going like i feel like I should that be warner allocated. that warner brothers talk again warner brothers we use a lot of acronyms have you noticed that like mm -hmm. a lot of industry acronyms we should go over a whole segment about acronyms we did have a show back in the day that we went over that we maybe should do it again to, and uh maybe it's time to represent that i'm pretty again. sure there's a lot of people who don't know what wb means yep pretty much um, but I, well, actually, that's not even industry. There's also sad. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think we can go over that one either. If you ever meet us, we'll tell you what sad means. So, but we have like RPA, we have PC, we have a bunch of stuff that we just kind of rattle off, and maybe at some point we should go over those. What do you? We should. You know, we should go over all re of it. Re revisit it. The again. acronym show. The acronym show. Mm -hmm. But the, what do you think of a Mac? It looks pretty nice, huh, C Rad? Yeah. Good design. Well, look, there's a lot of one on ones for each guy. Ooh, the that, collegiate patches that's all, those are, awesome. are one of fours. Yeah, right. <laughs> so if they only made two thousand boxes, I mean, this stuff's going to be. Uh, we're going to see all the WB ness going on. Yeah, what's uh, you're going to uh, see? You're gonna probably hear to see a Zion like once every Can't, other I, box. Who is that guy? Uh, Jared Culliver. Jared Culliver. Yeah. He's the top pick for the uh, uh, Timber Pups. That's right. That's wreck him. Right. Oh, yeah, wreck him for Texas Tech, I guess. So, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Tomorrow will be a Saturday. I don't think it comes out tomorrow, right? It comes out Friday. 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 So it doesn't come out Friday. Friday. It is released. Yeah, for on Panini's site on Friday. Probably depending on where you're at, you may get it Wednesday. If you're on the uh, West Coast, you probably get it Thursday or Friday. Yeah. Oh, that's right. TJ is in two cameras there. Man, there's two TJs. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got Immaculate seventeen eighteen. You guys probably already. Eight, eighteen nineteen. Oh, see. I don't even know. 18, See, I'm already 18, confused. 18, I'm already 19. confused. 18, 19, if you forgot, there's a guy named Luca. And, and Trey. And Trey. And Mo Bamba. And uh, Aiton. And Jaron Jackson. And, you know, a few other names. Uh, th th there's, there's still rookie product coming out for last year's rookies. Not the last one. Not the last one. Second to last one. We're so. close. Second we're at, off the line. <laughs> Second we're, off the line. <laughs> there, there's a finish line for the 18, 19 releases. And it's, a lot of lines. It's pretty... Pretty close. We're we're near the finish line. We are, but we are having a little bit of an overlap, which uh, big overlap, a little bit of an overlap that we're seeing here with little eighteen, nineteen, nineteen, twenty. Imagine if they imagine if they were like, <laughs> yeah. What if we had three years on one? What if they were just like, hey, uh, we forgot to release a seventeen, eighteen product. We 
We got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all eminence is coming out. 1718, Donovan Mitchell. I'm, I'm pretty sure in November we're going to get uh, 2021 with LaMelo Ball, number one draft pick. Oh, I saw that on ESPN. I guess he's like killing it. Like yeah, scou- good. Scouts, scouts are like, he could be the first overall pick. That's crazy. Ball, ball. Going to the Pelicans. Ball, ball, and bull, bull. Ball, 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 ball. Pelicans, the, the ball, all the ball family. Ball the ball. family. Yep. Um, also, one thing to mention, and I'm glad you guys brought it up in the chat, Busted did, is Kevin Garnett will be in the 1819 Immaculate, his first autos in years. I think his first autos, other that he, he was in Upper Deck back in the day, and that was it. So it's been like probably a good solid 10, 15 years with KG autos. So there's going to be some guys... And it looks like he's got Timberwolves and Celtics autos, and and uh, you know people went maybe on maybe even there. Brooklyn, maybe even Brooklyn. People went on there and bought the Timberwolves right away. I right mean, away. Yeah, I should, you know you guys got good deals. I couldn't. You guys got in there before I could you know adjust. So now, and this is going to be this this release. I don't I don't know how many they're going to have him sign. Um, I don't know if he's going to be in multiple products. We can look at Reggie Miller, and we can look at Charles Barkley recently where. The first release, I, I want to say for Barkley, it was like Noir, mm-hmm. I want to yeah. say. Mm-hmm. Those were going through the roof. It was crazy. Now, the market's been kind of watered down with Barkley. Yeah, a little so bit. So, if you get a Garnett auto out of Immaculate, I would probably sell it. I Because it's going to be the unless first one. Unless you're a Garnett guy and you've been waiting a long time to yeah, get a Garnett there's auto. There's going to be a lot of people who's never been able to get his autos. They're, they're going to... And, and I and I look at that and I'm like, that's great. That's that's a great thing for Panini to do. Yep. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. Tim be Duncan next. is he is he next at that point? After Tim Duncan Who is is there? is there anybody else? Is there any other veterans or legends that you have not seen signed for Panini, minus LeBron James and Michael Jordan? Right. Right. I'm not sure. I mean, I can't think Tim of Tim Duncan would be huge, though. Who would be uh, Tim Duncan would be big, bigger than Garnett, right? I mean, from a hobby standpoint, he has even ten less times as autos. much as yeah. Ten times I mean, does does like. Tim Duncan have a card autograph? Yeah, I he don't... does. He has rookie autographs. Uh, he has Topps Chrome. He might have been a Topps exclusive. He, was a, he had an autographics. Yeah, oh, like maybe he did. Uh, yeah, so I think his rookie year kind of he had a couple autos. Um, but uh, yeah, so. I don't think he's ever gonna sign. To be honest, yeah, I, I think he, he he's, he's like, kind of dr- against it. He he's, draws a line. He's like, I'm not. I'm not. He doesn't like. He doesn't like but that they, his signature but is used to be to make other people. They money. said that about Barkley. Barkley, they were like, "There's no amount of money that we can give Barkley to get him to sign." Right, and then he did, and then he did. Well, so, but, but Bar- Barkley likes to play the slots, and he, or he likes to play uh, some blackjack for you know a million dollars a hand. So Barkley likes his maybe cash after money. A, yeah after a long night, he was like, "Man, I gotta get to get some panini money." You know got, I, mean? I got to get some of that panini money. got to get some of that panini Hey, money. panini. <laughs> Don't you be a meanie. Um, but we have the pastime giveaway. I, I didn't tell you, C-Rad, but there should be a random.org window up. Oh, shoot, I think. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. Got it. There should be some full names. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you guys entered it this in Pastime Marketplace. We're going to send out the um, the graded card case, the XL version. You can see it here. And I would, if you, I would highly recommend if you have uh, cards and you want to store them safe, you want to keep them organized, uh, this thing's waterproof. You can lock it. Um, it fits a lot of cards in it. It, you know, you can travel with it. It's amazing, and we're giving one away right now. But you can buy one at pastimemarketplace.com. Um, so you guys entered this contest. There's actually only 98 people that entered. So, so you know, you got about one percent chance of winning. So mm-hmm. we're gonna head on over to random.org, and we're gonna go three times, and uh, the top name is gonna get this thing. Good luck. So good luck, guys. Should I zoom in a little bit here? Well, that looks good. You say give us a couple weeks for shipping on this. Yeah. One. We gotta get a, a box for it. So. Two. And drum roll. Please. If it's international, what do we do? Boom. Mike Freeman. Mike Freeman is the winner. Contact contact us through our website, uh, mojobreak.com. Go to our support tab. And there's a little form. And fill it out. Put it. Put your name, address, all that stuff in there. Say pastime winner, and we'll verify it with the email that you signed up for. So Mike Freeman, congrats uh, on winning Let's the get case. Get the air horn. Air, air, right, air. right, right. <laughs> but uh, yep, yeah, check out Pastime Marketplace. They make awesome cases. So for your cards, store them well. Keep them out of the area. I know my wife was like saying my cards are, you know. All over the place, so this kind of keeps them nice. Keep neat. them out of the where? Keep them out of the way. They're I all the way. They're all everywhere. The, they say keep them out of the air. Keep them out of the air. Yeah, they float. 
<laughs> no. Um, but we got another new release on Friday, guys. National Treasures Baseball, Bat Knob Chasing, Cut Autos, Books, RPAs. They usually have a huge checklist, and that's a lot of fun to break, and it's pretty much a breaking product. You, you know, boxes are like 500 bucks, so you can get into a break for like 60 bucks. You can get even team style cheaper than that sometimes on certain teams. And uh, we're going to be doing that on Friday. We also have Illusions Football on Friday and uh, brand new Artifacts Hockey, which did come out today, but we're doing it on Friday. So check it out, mojobreak.com. And uh, all of our breaks are scheduled. All of our breaks are guaranteed to break. We do all sports. Uh, we do all price points. We do personal box. We got something for everybody. If you love this hobby, there's something on our website that you'll be able to get into. So, um, But that does it for the show. We've got uh, HTA Chrome coming up and uh, fill it up. I think there's a few spots left. We also have uh, teams on sale for uh, Chrome Hobby that will be following the choice. And then we got the Tom Brady break. So get in on those guys. And we are out on 107. And that's it. Thanks for watching this episode.